Welcome to the Nitty Cats Podcast, episode 10. If you're a returning viewer, it's so nice to see you again. And if you're new, welcome to our pod. My name is Julie, and I am a Colorado knitter, dyer, crocheter, spinner, seamstress, but most importantly, I'm a cat rescuer. We're glad, I'm glad that you're here today. It's an exciting day because I have a giveaway. Hooray! <laughs> I have um, over 5,000 subscribers. So I have five prizes I'm gonna give away. Details are at the end. But I have so much more to share with you today. I had, when I started this, I think last June, hasn't even been a year, I thought I might be able to do it every three to four weeks. It's closer to four to six. I just don't have the time. It takes me a week to get it up, so we're just gonna go with four to six. So don't be disappointed if you don't see me for six weeks, <laughs> which I think it'll be close to six weeks this time. I want to share with you my finished objects, what I've acquired. I went on a little road trip to the Interweave Yarn Festival, and by road trip I mean about seven miles, <laughs> so it wasn't that far. But I have something super, super, super exciting to share with you. But I want to get started with what I finished. I want to show you my Benedicta. So this is one that I started, I must have started it in January with the hopes of wearing it for Easter. I had it finished by Easter, but I just didn't really feel like wearing it, so I didn't wear it for Easter. Uh, it does have crosses on it and a really neat meaning behind it. Devin Bentry, who is the pattern designer, uh, has a really neat uh, little story about the Benedicta on the pattern. So go to her website, buy the pattern, and you'll get to read the little story about the Benedicta. But I want to share with you what's funny about the Benedicta for me. I mentioned before that I had started this and it was going along great. And then we were getting ready to move to my mom's house because we're doing a little bit of work at our house. And I was packing things up. And I don't know if, about, if you guys do this, but I put together all the needles I'm gonna use in all the sizes when I start a pattern so that I'm not having to, when it's time, go put something together. I use interchangeable needles. So I just like to get everything ready. Well, I had been trying Carbon's needles, which I love. I'm a Knitter's Pride fan. I like Knitter's Pride needles because they're not too sharp. And the Carbon's, <laughs> I had all lined up. But the problem with the Carbon's, and in the smaller sizes I really wanted them, I only have a few, is they're strong but you can see they're all the same color. <laughs> that created a little bit of a problem for me on this sweater, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> there are two sizes that you need to use for this pattern. A US 4, a US, and a US 5. Well, I had mentioned to you that you need to use, a, to go up a size when you're doing color work during the color work part, and that way your color work isn't tight. So I got my needles ready, one, two, three, and I'm knitting along, and I couldn't figure out why it was so tight, and I mentioned that to you guys last time. Well, I continued to hold it up and think, oh my gosh, this looks so small, I'm never gonna get into this. So by the time I was down um, to my waist and just about finished, I turned the light on and actually read the needles. <laughs> so what I had done Basically, I knit the whole thing in the smaller size because I had, uh, let's see, there's the five. So I had, on the same cord for each one, done a four and a five. Now, do you know what I mean by that? So on one cord, I put a four and a five. I thought I was doing a four and a four. And on the next one, I did a four and a five, thinking I was doing a five and a five. So. Pretty much, I knit this whole sweater in a size four, with the exception of the color work, which I'm glad. <laughs> but still, I thought, there's no way I'm getting in this sweater. I caught it by the time I did the sleeves, so I did the sleeves in the right size. But, I mean, I held this sweater up and I just was cracking up. <laughs> I told my sister, well, I have this sweater blocked so hard 
that if I can't get this stretched out, I need to head to the nearest kindergarten and bless a little five-year-old girl with this sweater because it was so small. Oh my gosh, it was so small, but it turned out okay. It's shorter than I wanted it. It's not quite cropped, but I wanted a full length sweater, uh, but it didn't turn out full length because I pulled it so much, but that's okay. It fits, it's darling, I love it. It's, I would make a couple changes and I did learn something on this for myself only. I, I don't know that I need to be putting color work across my chest. I think that I could do a pattern and just stop with the color work here and it would just be a lot more flattering for me. I'm not big chested, but it kind of makes me look bigger. And I should probably get up a little bit so you can see. Um, just hits me in a funny place. So, and then my arms, I don't know what's happened to my arms, you guys, they're cut getting largey. <laughs> so I don't think I'll put color work on my arms anymore either. I think I just need to stay with my color work right on the yoke and this sweater would be amazing to do just the color work on the yoke. I do love it. It's wool. I used, I think I told you the colors last time. It was all knitting pearly. This is meadow. The green is meadow and the rest of it was a color pack that I got for Mother's Day last year. But it all came together. I, I love it. I'm finished with it. And I don't know how much I'll wear it. Maybe some evenings because right now in our little town, <laughs> it's 79 degrees. It's the 5th, 14th of, of April, 79 degrees, which is 26 degrees Celsius. That's hot early. Now it did snow last week and it's going to snow at the end of the week. So that's Colorado for you. So maybe I can wear it at the end of the week, but it is warm right now. But I did also teach myself something. <laughs> Do you remember that I told you that I was gonna go to my sister knits and treat myself to some Carbons needles, either Carbons or, um, why can't I ever think of those? You guys want the name of these? Zings. And I had decided I kind of wanted carbons. I was going to splash out and get some carbons. Well, after that debacle with this, I have decided, oh, there goes a, a herring, a great blue heron, great blue heron, not herring. How pretty. They're huge. Anyway, I've decided I need to stick to uh, <laughs> training needles. <laughs> I'm going to call them training needles because, and that's one of the reasons I do like the zings. And I also like the other Knitter's Pride needles is every needle is a different color. So for instance, these are the Royales. Which I really like these two. I really do like these a lot. Why I keep buying needles is beyond anyone's sense of reason. I just like them. So I love those because they're different colors. And then also are the Zings. I have a lot of Zings out apparently because they're not really in here, but you can see these are the zings. So that's what I ended up buying at my sister knits what were the zings double point needles. And I've totally revamped and reorganized my double point needles. I still need to get the long ones, but I do have the shorter ones in my Woolen Works Designs pouch. So I'm gonna go back and get the longer ones too, but you can see each needle is a different color. <laughs> so I'm not making that mistake again. It was one of those things that it's just been a really crazy and stressful time. And I thought, I cannot believe I did that. You just kind of go shoot <laughs> and then have to take a breath and think, what have I done? I hope it's rectified. And then, then you're like, should I just rip it back? But you're literally done with the sweater except for little short sleeves. And I just thought, you know what, I'm gonna try like crazy. And it did, it bloomed, it's soft. I love it, it's really, really pretty. It'll be really cute over a, like a white dress, or I mentioned last time I have a pink linen skirt that I did bring. I went and got it from our house. So that's that. <laughs> the last of the green sweaters for a while. One funny thing I did too, when I went back to our house to get some things, it's like climbing through the plastic protectors to get to my knitting room and I have plastic everywhere because I don't want any drywall on my yarn. I thought to myself, I'm going to go, I bought this silk when we were in Italy and I wasn't a great knitter then. I was just 
kind of really experimenting and I bought this silk and I thought I'm gonna make a Sophie scarf out of this silk. How pretty would that be to change colors halfway and it would be kind of light and airy for uh, summer. And then I thought I should grab a couple of my summer scarves actually. <laughs> and look what I found. Same colors, different scarf. Dang it. I mean, it's like, I thought, do I have no memory? I made a little summer scarf, same, same. So I, ha I have to find something else for this. If you have any ideas, let me know. I want to pause for a minute and change into my next finished object because like I said, it's 79 degrees. I'm in the shade, but it's a little bit stuffy and stuffy where I'm at because I'm up against a fence in front of a tree trying to find some shade. So I'm gonna go put my next finished object on and then I'll be right back because it's linen. It'll be nice and cool. This is my next finished object finished object and it's the Cunis Light or Cunis Light. I'm not sure how to say it. I did play yarn chicken with this one. <laughs> I love it though. It's so comfortable. It's made of French linen and cotton. I think it's 50-50. So it was really nice to work with. I've been kind of dreading summer knitting because it hurts your hands knitting with linen and cotton. There's not a lot of give. But this was so soft. I got this yarn at the Knitting McPurley Retreat in January 2023 from someone who was selling yarn that she dyed and I will find the tag. I don't know what I did with it. I was looking for it. But it's French linen and cotton. And it was the softest yarn. I just wanted to, to buy something from her because she was so sweet and she was there to come set up her little booth. Um, but I do love this. I haven't washed it yet. I did kind of steam it a little bit so it would lay. I'm going to love it. It'll be nicer when I get a little bit of a suntan. I'm a little bit pasty right now, but very comfortable, very light. It would be so cute under a jean jacket. Very cute with like a little summer scarf like this. You know, you could do a jean jacket, take this, sit outside as it gets cooler, put something like this on. Super fun. This pattern was one that I uh, used I had gotten it at a yarn shop and on my second, third, maybe my third podcast, I told you guys that I would give you the pattern. I don't have, I do have a Ravelry, but maybe I'll try to get it up there. It's just one that she gave me, an easy triangle. This was ribbon yarn, so that was the magic of it though, that half and half. Just looks really cool. I have a teal one and, ooh, you're going to get a rare sighting. Oh. I have Annie. Here's Annie. This is my big mountain lion kitty. Hi, Annie. Now, there's something really funny that Annie has a collar on right now because she's been up to her antics again. She is very afraid, so I'm, I'm surprised that she's out here. She's very afraid during the day. I don't know if she was traumatized. She's terrified to come outside during the day. I just really started coming outside at home after three years while we're there. But when it turns dark, she's gone. And she's up to her old antics here at my mom's house. My husband is now taking a nap because he was up till 4.30 trying to find her last night. So she has a collar on now. She's not happy about it, but she's gonna have to have it on. And we put a GPS tracker on her because we turn around and she's just gone. So, and we like to be outside. So we like to sit outside with the door open and don't want to lock her in. We just need to be able to find her. <laughs> so she has a collar on, but that's rare that you'll get to see Annie because she doesn't usually come out during the day. She's the one on my head in my pictures of in the intro. Such a sweet girl. Okay, my other finished object is my Mary Mitts. My mother-in-law's name is Mary, and my husband is headed there in a couple weeks to just be with her. Uh, he, she lives in Yorkshire. I, she's just moved. What's the name? Near Doncaster. I can't think of the town. But my husband's sister lives in that town also too, and works or works there, lives there, and takes care of her mostly. Even though Mary lives on her own. 
and but Mar but Rachel, my husband's sister, wants to go on vacation. So my husband's going to go stay for three weeks and also celebrate his mother's birthday while he's there. But I made Mary a pair of knits last Christmas. Was it two Christmases ago? Out of yarn I had spun myself and sent them. And she is a British woman. I don't know if this is stereotype. She doesn't say a lot. Doesn't embellish a lot. Anyway, she's very matter of a fact, matter, matter of fact, but she went on and on about my mitts. I don't think it's because they were beautiful, but she wears she uses canes or sticks as they call them in the UK. And she said they were just amazing helping her hands cushion a little bit on the sticks. So I made her a summer pair, even though they're wool. Uh, they're cushy. So that I call them Mary mitts. And those are going to England soon. Very quick knit, by the way. It was just a free pattern. Do I even have it? Oh, I do have it. Called Calis Calypso Knits. Easy fingerless mitts. I debated making them in cotton. I probably should make her a pair in cotton and send them. Uh, but, but she goes out and she does still walk, so maybe the wool would be good. And then the next thing, I'm almost done with my socks. <laughs> I haven't worked on them very much, but I'm ready to put in the toe. And I do an afterthought heel. And it was funny because I couldn't remember the yarn the last time. Do you remember that? You guys are amazing because I had someone write in and she knew exactly what yarn I was using. And I did find the little wrap, and she was right. They're just Premier Sock, Serenity Sock, and she knew the color. Mm, chili. Yeah, she knew. <laughs> it's not funny. Knitters are hilarious that way. We know those things. So anyway, I just have, I've put in the waist yarn for the afterthought heel, and I'm ready to do the toe. So those should be done by next time. I'll just get those finished up. And they're in my cute little marmalade bag. Marmalade, my kitty that passed away. And I had a Dolce cat that looked just like that too. Two long-haired orange tabbies. Pretty lucky. If you ever have the opportunity to rescue an orange tabby, do it. Because they are amazing, amazing cats. So that's what I'm working on. The next thing I'm going to do is tell you a little bit about my trip to the interweave makers festival and I'm going to put together a little video of wh where I went and what I did some pictures but before I before I do that I want to tell you it was very interesting this whole podcasting thing so I went in and the first booth I went to is one of my favorite booths to go to I go every time and it's right in the beginning and it's brown um, Brown Sheep Wool Company out of Mitchell, Nebraska. And they're a family yarn producer and mill. I'd love to go there. Anyway, I, we, we, a couple of years ago, my sister and I made friends with one of the owners and she bought wool from our hometown and we knew the same people because it's small and most of the people there, a lot of the people there grew wool, raised sheep. So we knew mutual people and it's just nice to see her every year. But while I was in there, I, someone said, I know you. I'm like, what? Oh my gosh, what? And they knew me from the podcast. So it was really neat. I didn't know that that would happen ever because I live in a small area, but it did. And here's a picture. I'm gonna put up a picture and their names, Karen and Pam. Um, so you'll see those when I do my video. So without further ado, Welcome to the Interweave Makers Festival. And this particular one is held in Loveland, Colorado. We have been going probably for about seven or eight, eight years at least. This booth is my sister's favorite. She loves to visit the Greenwood Fiber. They're based out of Utah. They have the most luxurious fiber you could ever want. <laughs> really beautiful. Here's the Brown Sheep Wool Company. This is where I usually get fiber and wool. And just around the corner is a Colorado dyer called A Herd of Cats. And you know she's after my own heart because she dyes yarn bases to match a shelter cat. 
So she went to the Dumb Friends League and took pictures of cats and then made a colorway for them. So if you love cats, you need to visit her Etsy shop. This year, she added dogs, so you have no excuse. <laughs> She's super nice, and she also gives a proceed, part of the proceeds from her profits go to the Denver, Denver Dumb Friends League. Little cat stitch markers. You can see the different colorways up on the wall behind the suitcase. She puts them in these darling vintage suitcases. That's how she carries them about. Here's my Nia. So I had to buy this one. the dogs look at those sweet faces here's my new friends Karen and Pam Mary Lee and Kathy the cutest little kitty beds felted wool company in Boulder and here's felted mice and my sister you get to see my sister with biscuit yarns. These are her friends, Kim and Cheryl. Okay, so you also saw someone in that video, some two other ladies that did the same thing. I'm walking down the hall and they say, oh my gosh, I know you. And, it, and here's another picture. And you saw, so you saw the picture, Mary Lee and Carol, Kathy. Mary Lee and Kathy. And <laughs> I sat and talked to them for a minute. It was, it's just cool. I don't consider myself special or that people would want anything to do with me, but here we are. So thank you, you guys made me feel really special. I would love to do an outing. Uh, Cara, uh, Mary Lee and Kathy, we talked about doing a trip to the Brown Sheep Wool Company, maybe doing a meeting at a park and ride here on the interstate or something and heading up there and then my mind got going and I thought, why don't we rent a van and my husband can drive so that we can all knit. It's two hours and 20 minutes or something each way. It'd be super fun. It's a great facility. And the owner said, just make sure you email me. I'll make sure you get a great tour. It would just be fun to do. We can bring a sack lunch or pick up some sandwiches or I can make sandwiches. I don't know. But I thought that would be really fun. So if you live in the area and that's something that you think you'd like to do, let's do it as well as meeting sometime at my sister knits. I'd like to do that this summer too. So let me show you what I bought. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. I'll show you what I bought at the Brown Sheep Wool Company. So they are, they have raw wool. They have wool for dyeing. I've bought a lot of wool for dyeing. I bought three walls of this. Now look at this, <laughs> it's so pretty. Uh, I think it's a pound. But it, it's teal, and can you see that? Oh yeah. It's teal and black and white. And I'm so excited to do this. This is, this is what I'm gonna work on next. I did, by the way, spin up my bee yarn. I just haven't plied it with anything. Remember I talked about my bee yarn? That This is my mom's color too. So this'll be something in memory of my mom as well. I love this color. She would love this color. I wanna try, a barber. I talked about that last time. I know this kind of already has it in it. 
but I think I'm gonna spin the whole thing as a single and then ply it with black. So we'll see what happens. But I, got, I bought three of these, enough for a sweater and a white one, just so that I'd have something here. Um, all my other yarn is at my house, my, un, my yarn for spinning. My, it's not yarn, it's wool. <laughs> wool for spinning, I'm spinning it into yarn. And then I saw these, I kind of got suckered into these because I see people in the UK spinning from cones and they have these, they're just one-offs, but it was a lot of yarn. I think this is 1,600 yards for $24. And so I got that, because I could probably make a sweater. If not, I have this one. And these are both sport weight, so I don't know if I'll make something together or a color work or do something. But I thought it was a great price. And then I bought these, because I thought they'd go good together. <laughs> oh, I buy things. I should get things. I should have a pattern in mind. And these are worsted. Just a really pretty black and then charcoal. So who knows what I'm gonna make with those, but I have them. And you'll, I'll be spinning off a spool for the first time. I never have done that. I do have some recycled cotton that I bought last year that I could give a spin to, but I don't know, it looks pretty harsh. It looks like um, I should make a washcloth or something. I'm not sure I'd make some clothes. So I got that at the Brown Sheep Wool Company and I got these. They only had two of these. But I thought, what a fun winter vest. It's worsted weight. It wasn't quite enough. So I got this one, which isn't the same, but I think if I mix them together, they have similar colors, but aren't they pretty? That blue just pops right out. It is so pretty. I bought these, yum. And then they had this cotton fleece, which is wool, 80% cotton and 20% wool. And I thought that looked really interesting. I want to make a couple summer vests. So I got enough to make a blue vest. I thought that would be really pretty. And also red. So we'll see what I make with those. I need to get started because it's summer. I'm well into my summer knitting, as you can see. I'm so excited about this. I'm going to show you another project that I'm working on too. But let me get through my acquisitions. Then I bought these from Sun Valley Fibers. These guys are so nice. We see them every year. I bought the prettiest yarn last year, which I haven't used. This cherry, it's called cherry wine. It's the prettiest red. But anyway, this is sport weight. I wanted a, a poppy color. And it is so pretty. This is a husband and wife team come, that come every year. They have a beautiful booth. And they're from Wisconsin. Wisconsin or Minnesota? I'm pretty sure. Oh, let me look. No, oh, it doesn't say. I'll put it up. I can't remember. I've had so many Wisconsin, Wisconsin and Minnesota people in my life lately that I can't remember where they were from. But they have a farm. They dye and, and uh, do the milling, I believe, too. Sun Valley Fibers, and it's called Cantina. And this will be a really pretty like sweater for fall. I think I love this color. I love poppies, my favorite flower. And then I bought these, I bought three of these to make the Seneca sweater, which I'll put up. And this is a, from a company in California called Sincere Sheep. And this is 50% wool, 25% mulberry silk, and 25% Belgian linen. Dang it, I bought linen and wool again. I wasn't gonna do that anymore. Shoot. Anyway, I'll explain why later at another time. Anyway, <laughs> it was so pretty and it was really pretty knitted up. So I will make something beautiful out of this. I think it's DK. And I really want to make that Seneca top. So I'll put that up. I did. Oh, we found, we went to Biscot Yarns. They were there from Montreal. They were so cool. A couple from uh, Montreal, Canada. And I bought this. I wanted to make a summer sweater. This is hemp and wool. And it's uh, heathered. You can see. See how it's heathered? It's called granola. Made in Canada. But they didn't have enough for a sweater, so I'm going to make a vest. 
I'm into vests. I love vests. They're fun. And also with them, I got a knitter's notebook because I'm almost through mine, believe it or not. And they gave me a cute bag. I don't know if you guys knew. I didn't know. I did know they had a shop because Selma of Selma Knits did a little road trip there and they have, she went to their Montreal store. They also have one in Quebec and New Jersey and someplace else. Hmm. Can't, it doesn't, I don't know, but anyway, they were so nice. I'll put a, I, I put a picture up of them in my video. So that was really cool to meet them. You kind of meet, feel like you're meeting fam famous people, which is fun. Let's see, oh, the, Little squirrel yarn. They're actually from my home, from my town here. And they have beautiful yarn. My sister and I are going to make socks. We bought, we each bought a color and we're gonna switch with our extras to do the toe and cuff because we never use a full skein of sock. So that'll be really fun. Okay, so this one is special to me. And you saw them in the video. And she does sell on Etsy. You know this one's gonna be a, a, um, after my heart. And I, I bought her yarn about three years ago at the Longmont Yarn Shop. And she went to the Denver Dumb Friends League or the shelter in Denver and took pictures of animals, of the cats that were there that needed a home. And then she made a yarn to match them. Each one has a name. They were real cats. This was Zoe. She said that they have all been adopted now, thank goodness. And I do have one of these for every cat that I've had. <laughs> but I didn't have my the last two that I have here. I don't have Nia, and this looks just like her. I'll put a picture up of them. And this was Annie, who was just on my lap. And this was, a, it's a beautiful... It's fingering. I don't know if I will, I mean, it's sock yarn. It's so soft. But the cool thing is, is that she now also is doing dogs. So she has little packs that you can do dogs, you, you know, rescue dogs that she took pictures of them and also cats. So go on her Etsy shop, find your cat and buy the yarn. She was super nice. You'll never believe what I did. I asked her if I could take a video and she talked about what she did. You know what, I do this all the time. I think I've pushed the uh, start button and I don't push it. So the whole thing happened. I didn't take the video, but I do have some pictures because I had done it earlier. <laughs> but oh, this is so near and dear to me. I loved seeing her. I look for her every time. Special person, and she oh, and she donates 10% of all her yarn sales from that you that's tied to a cat to the Denver Dumb Friends League. So that's a great one. I did buy. Grab this, a jumbo yarn. Winder. <laughs> I needed this because sometimes when I'm spinning, I have these giant spools that are coming off. And I can't, I haven't, I haven't, um, sorry, I'm tongue tied for a minute. And they, they fall off my other winder or they, my winder starts clicking because it's too heavy. And this is a heavy duty yarn ball winder. And the, the family that made it, it's this couple, an older couple that makes it. And it's the Oregon Woodworker. My sister bought this really cute mini Swift that had pegs in it so you can uh, wind up mini skeins easily. And they were so sweet and he makes these. It was a really good price. My husband put it together for me and I can't wait to use it. It's very smooth. He was an engineer, oh no, he was a retired financial something. And this is his retirement was building things like this. So I was so grateful to get that. What else did I buy? I think that might be it. Oh, no, no, no. Oh shoot, I have to get the mice that I bought too. I bought some felted mice at this little booth and this cute little felted bag. I bought a couple of these actually that you can embellish and embroider and I'm gonna do that with these. So, so cute. 
And the funny thing is, is I bought one for my sister. <laughs> and I'm gonna show you, of course she bought me a little bag too. I'm gonna have to find that and show you that. So we both have bought bags for each other. That was kind of funny. And I bought this. Yay! So pretty. At a needle runs through it. This is, it was all bags, pretty much, and some stitch markers. Is that the prettiest fabric? I actually went to get a cat bag. I don't have a little box bag like this. And I, went, I saw a cat bag I was gonna get, and my sister found this fabric, and of course, that's what I wanted. And that's her shop. And she, she's on Etsy as well. I'll link all of these things. And she gave us a little stitch marker that says Yarn Fest 2024. Yay. So that's, I think, all I bought at the, that's it. That's all I bought at the Yarn Fest, which is a lot. But I, I had, oh, no, 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 sorry. I bought these. They had beads there this time too. And I have, I'm into green, if you didn't know, my little necklace. So I bought some beads. I'm gonna string them and make a little, like a cute little green choker out of these little itsy bitsy micro beads. I think it'll be really cute. So I got a green one and a red one. I'll let you know how it turns out. <laughs> Can you hear the chickadees? They sound great. Before the Yarn Fest, I had purchased some things at My Sister Knits. I had talked to you about Possum. And, and Julie, the shop owner, had told me that they were getting in some Possum. Well, I went down there, picked my color, and bought a sweater's worth of Possum. This is the color I got. And one of the people there had started knitting with this. It's from Australia, no, New Zealand. No, let's see. New Zealand, New Zealand possum. And it's super soft and super warm. I think I told you guys that my girlfriend has a possum scarf that her husband bought her. He was a flight, a pilot, and he had purchased a possum wrap for her while he was down there. And I've been so envious. So I'm very excited that I have the ability to make, and I'm gonna make a sweater, cardigan. I don't know what yet. I want to, I've been seeing, and I've made one out of my Opus yarn, and it's a Petite Knits cardigan that's a bandless cardigan, and I loved that. There was no, you were, you knit the button band in as you're knitting the whole thing. I loved, loved, loved that. I wanna do that again, so I'm gonna be in search of that. This is, I can't remember what it was. I think it's DK or Sport. Then, while I was there, I also found this, and it's so beautiful. This again, it's this is more of a coral color, and I bought a sweater sweater's quantity of that. This is merino and Shetland, so it's 100% wool. I bought a sweater's quantity of this as well. Very very pretty. I ordered from Nitty McPurley. Her color of the month for March, and then a little mini to make socks. I think that's really pretty too. You guys, I know, I bought a lot. Kind of embarrassing. I hadn't bought a lot in a while. So I did go a little bit overboard, but again, it's been a, it's been a while. So that's what I made, or that's what I purchased. And the next thing I wanna talk about is my new rabbit hole. And it's a big hole. Very exciting to me. So I, a couple years ago, had purchased a cashmere top at a resale shop with the intention of unraveling the yarn and using it. And it was a disaster. I got the seams out and the cuffs and I didn't know what I was doing. And it was, see, it was a cut seamed garment. So when I undid the ends, literally every row I had a new strand of cashmere. <laughs> so I had a strand, this, so I stopped. I stopped after like six rows. I thought this is so irritating. I'm not doing it, I still have it. I need to felt it and make something or cut, make some cashmere mitts and cut it or something. So, but I've still always been interested, not because I, I like recycling, 
from a green standpoint, but really from a, I think it's cool that you can reuse things. I just think it's a really cool concept. So I was watching a, a podcaster and her name is Lisa and she her podcast is Lisa Makes and she did that with cashmere. And I thought, oh my gosh, seriously. And I watched and I watched and, and she taught you how to do it. So I have the link up. I'm gonna put the link to Lisa Makes, the one that inspired me. And um, I have three that I'm gonna, I have to change my notes here. I have three that I want to um, share with you. Three, three videos or, and podcasters that I watched. One of them was Lisa Makes and she gets the first place, first place prize for um, best inspiration and follow through. And by that, I mean, <clears throat> she actually showed you how to buy this sweater on Etsy, showed you what to look for. I did exactly what she said. She um, showed you how to unwind it and take the seams out. And then she finished the garment and hat. It's so cool. I was so excited. Uh, and so I'm gonna show you what I've been doing. The next one was APT Altier. I'll, let's see, I don't know how to say it. Atelier. And she had the best instructions. She had really in-depth instructions, went really slow on how to unseam these garments. And then Engineering Knits is another podcaster that I watch and she got first place for best contraption. So I'm gonna link all three of those videos and I want you guys to go watch them. And, but I'm gonna show you what I've done. First, as you know, I'm staying at my mom's house and I've been going through clothes and um, most of my mom's clothes has gone to Goodwill. I've been very carefully going through things to see if my aunts could use anything. One of my aunts took some sweaters. Um, my mom was larger when she passed, so none of them really fit anybody, but my aunt is very crafty and she has, taken apart the seams and re-sewn them. And it brings me great joy that she's using them. I have some more, so I'll reach out to my other aunts to see if they wanna try the same thing. But as I was going through her closet, one of the closets, I found these sweaters. I'm like, oh, these are so pretty. They're so my mom. They're summer sweaters. And my mom, when she liked something, bought it in every color. So I wasn't surprised to find four colors of the same sweater, but they hardly looked worn. And they were cotton cotton poly and this is what they look like just a basic cotton pullover and there's a white one a teal one a royal blue one and a coral one those were her colors peacock colors we called her and I looked at them and I thought it's such a shame that we can't my sister and I don't have anything of hers that we can wear and I looked at the seams and I thought could we could I do that and I started looking at them and I'm like, oh my gosh, I think this is one that you can do, I think. And, and you have to watch the videos because I'm not a good instructor in there, but I looked at the side seam and I thought, this is one I can do. Oh my gosh, should I try it? You hate to ruin a sweater, but I also thought, you know what, I'm give, putting these in Goodwill, I might as well try. So I tried and I was like a squealing baby I was like, I cannot believe this is working. I came out in the garden because it kind of gets fragments of stuff, threads, and, and I it was really bright light and I could see and I very carefully did as the instructors told me to do and I unwound the white one. <laughs> and this is what the yarn looks like when it comes off. So this was one, this is how thin it was. Very, very thin. And it's two strands of like thread. So I was kind of disappointed that it was really thin, but then I thought, you know what? I can either knit thin and my sister and I can each make something or I can double it and, and I tested it and it was like a DK weight. Well, my sister wasn't very excited. <laughs> so I thought I'm gonna make a DK weight. So what I've been making, and I wish I would have been done by now, but I'm not. I'm making the Petite Knits Anchor Tee. I still have the sleeves, as you can see, to do. If 
but I'm super excited about it and it fits great. It's a little bit tight up here. I wish I would have done a different cast on that was a little more forgiving because cotton isn't. It's cotton rayon. Perfect length. It's going to be wonderful. So I'm so, so excited that I did that with cotton. So it made me want to do cashmere. And my husband said, is it really worth it? And I said, well, this was of my mom's things and I'm going to do all four sweaters. If my sister, hopefully one day she will want some of the yarn, but I'm going to do all four of them or at least save all four of them. And <laughs> it was so much yarn. Maybe I can use my yarn winder because literally that's what you do is you, you, you're using your yarn winder. And that's a giant one. I could have made a giant cone. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm going to save all my mom's sweaters, but I wanted to, to make a cashmere one because I love cashmere. And I told my husband, you know, to make a cashmere sweater would probably cost $400 easy to buy the cashmere. And so I went on Etsy and as Lisa taught you, she teaches you to ask to look at the seams. And so I found this beautiful sweater and I wanted a men's large is best because then you have a lot of yarn. This was a woman's large, but I think it had gotten shrunk a little bit. But I thought I'm still gonna, it looked cute, it was pink. I asked to see the seams. The person sent me a picture of the seams. This is the seam that you're supposed to look for. You can see how it splits. And so you cut down, you take the sleeves off, you undo that and you just start unwinding. Anyway, so I, made, I bought this pink one. And it was so pretty when I got it. I thought, I'm not tearing that apart. I'm just going to have a new pink cashmere sweater. So I have worn and worn and worn and worn this. I just washed it for winter and blocked it. And it looks kind of big now. I made it bigger, way bigger than it was for sure. Um, but maybe this is the size it was and that person had shrunk it a little bit. So anyway, I'm pretty excited to have a pink cashmere sweater that I'm not tearing apart. <laughs> but I had found a second one. This one actually just came from 60 miles away. It's a large. I asked to see the seams. The pink one was like you could tell, smelled like it had just been washed. That's why I didn't wash it. I just put it on and wore it. I actually wore it to church the next day. This one has these big chunky seams. Can you see that? That's exactly what you're looking for. And this is big. This looks like it was washed too. It wasn't clean when it came, which is unfortunate so I did wash it right away but I haven't blocked it but this is hundred percent cashmere it's so soft I will not I have extra yarn because I won't ever do a turtleneck so it'll be plenty of yarn for me for sure for a sweater and I will keep you posted I didn't want to undo them until I showed you the sweater first and I will probably have another one purchased by the time oh what did I pay for these by the time I see you next I did pay I think I paid forty dollars for each one Lisa did better than I did. She was paying like 20 and 30, but I did end up paying 40 uh, with shipping, maybe 42. But still, I mean, to get a really beautiful cashmere yarn, 100% cashmere that you can reuse and make a sweater for $42, that's pretty good. So that is my rabbit hole that I'm so excited to share with you. I want you guys to go to um, their podcasts. Uh, it was Lisa Makes, APT Altier, at, at atelier, atelier and engineering knits and watch those because they were kind of fun and you learned something. Oh, you guys, what else do I have for you? Uh, let's see. Oh, the giveaway. The giveaway, the giveaway, the giveaway. That's pretty exciting. Let me pause for a minute and get, get my giveaway. Okay, do you Good. guys remember the last giveaway I did? You had to jump through all these hoops and I'm so sorry. My daughter had told me, she's young, and she's a social media person and she had told me they have to follow you on Instagram, they have to do all these things. So I said, okay. <laughs> and I'm so sorry I did that to you. I'm not doing that to you this time. So I have hit 5,000 subscribers. All you have to do is comment <laughs> because that's the only way that I'll find you. So I have great prizes. These are the prizes. Yay, I'm sending all this your way. So each person will get some yarn. So two skeins of yarn and I have various colors. I hope you make some mitts or a hat or something wonderful. You are getting a Knitty McPurly balm. 
Do you know I love this stuff? You will be getting some stitch stuffers of different variety. Let's see, I should put it on that side. So three sets of stitch stoppers and two little nitty cat stitch, kitty cat knit, excuse me, nitty cat stitch markers. The next thing I'm gonna give you is one of my favorite, favorite things, and I've had these for a while to give out to you. This is called the handy tool. And if you don't have a handy tool, you need a handy tool and you'll wonder, what did I ever do before the handy tool? <laughs> this is probably the one knitting tool that I can't live without. I don't know how many I have. I'd be embarrassed to count because I have one everywhere, in every bag, in every place I knit, all the time because I can't be without them. I, I do my bind off with this. I pick up stitches with this. It, they're invaluable. And so each one of you is getting one. They come in these really fun colors. Pink, purple, gold, and gold. So all you have to do is comment. I'm going to do the drawing on May 5th. Did I say May 5th? I think it's May 5th. Let me look. Yeah, May 5th. And you just have to comment. I, you can comment whatever you want because it just picks them. But I thought it would be kind of fun to, um, for, you to, for you to put, are you a cat, dog, or both? Do you like cats, dogs, or both? That way you don't have to feel like you have to write some big something. You can just put cat, cat dog, both. And if I can figure out how to do it, I can tell you how many are cat people, how many are dog people, and how many are both. <laughs> So again, that giveaway will be May 5th. I'll do a drawing. If you are overseas, depending on where you are, and I'll still try and send it to you. If it's in a country that has a difficult time receiving packages from the US, then I will send you a Ravelry gift certificate. How's that? I think that's it, you guys. I did find my little bag that my sister <laughs> bought me at the Yarn Fest. It's so cute. Things that we do, cats and yarn, that's what we do. So, I hope you're enjoying spring. I hope that you are enjoying the blooms. It's amazing around here. The grass will be green after the next snow. We got our fertilizer down. So after the next snow, it's gonna be really green here. And I love this time of year. I wished it was at my home, but I'm not. So I'm gonna enjoy being here. Until next time. <laughs>